Christ is in our midst. And that was good. Kalimata, good morning. So today is Stewardship Sunday uh, number two. And uh, I have to tell you that I, I really find preaching and teaching on stewardship to be a very invigorating and edifying subject. I, I think it's one of the most fascinating subjects in our theology. So today I, I want to I tell you a story from the Old Testament. Uh, maybe you've heard it, maybe not. It's, it's definitely on the obscure side of Old Testament stories. And then I want to unpack the story and see what this particular story has to tell us about the topic of stewardship. The story is often referred to as Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. Uh, now the story goes that in standard fashion, the people of Israel, the Jews, had abandoned the true God, as they often did. And Elijah is sent by God to tell the people of Israel that as a penance from God, there will be no rain and no dew even until Elijah commands it to be. And for three and a half years, we are told, there is drought and famine in Israel. Now during this time, Elijah is sent to the city of Zarephath, where according to the word of God, there is a widow who is going to provide for him. We are told, quote, so he, Elijah, arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. Uh, and as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Now Zarephath was also suffering from this same drought and famine. And we learn that this woman this widow has just enough food to make some bread for herself and her son for one day, and then they will be entirely out of food. The woman initially objects to Elijah's request, telling the prophet, quote, Look, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die, right? Things were not going well for this widow. But Elijah persists, and not only does he persist, but he actually adds to the task. He says, quote, do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me, and afterward make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. And so it happened, right? The bin of flour did not empty miraculously, and the oil did not run dry until the end of the famine. Now, to me, this is a beautiful and powerful story. I get goosebumps when I tell it. Why do I share this story on Stewardship Sunday number two? Because I believe it gives us a lot of important clues on what being a good steward looks like. And I will offer four clues that I have personally pulled out from this story. First, the widow heard, trusted, and obeyed. She heard, trusted, and obeyed. While it's true that her initial reaction was to question the sanity of the prophet, ultimately she does what the prophet tells her. She took from the little that she had, and gave bread and water to Elijah, not really knowing for sure that God would in fact continue to provide flour and oil until the end of the famine. So that's clue one. Secondly, she gave Elijah the first of the bread. She gave Elijah the first of the bread. Quote, and Elijah said to her, do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. Now, why does it matter that she pulled the first portion out for Elijah? Well, there are a lot of potential answers to that. But I would say the most important answer is that in doing this, she showed faith that God was able to bless and multiply the rest, right? To put it in simple terms, it's one thing to give, give God whatever might be left in the bank at the end of the month 
after the bills are paid and all of the troubles are taken care of, right? It's something very, very different to give God a certain amount at the start of the month, not having yet paid one's bills, having faith that God will get us through the month, right? Are you following my line there? Hopefully you are. So that's clue number two. Clue number three is that she gave Elijah one third of the meager amount that she had, right? Now this woman was not Bill Gates, right? She was not Jeff Bezos. This was a woman whose total net worth was probably around six cups of flour and about eight ounces of oil, perhaps, right? Again, it's relatively easy to give out of our plenty, right? It's another thing altogether to give out of our poverty, right? And that's what we see in this widow today. And that's clue number three. Finally, the fourth clue, which isn't exactly a clue, it's more of a, a point uh, extrapolating on the first three clues. And that's that God provided through miraculous means for this faithful widow. This woman's willingness to hear, trust, and obey, combined with her obedience in giving the first portion of the bread to Elijah, and her giving a relatively enormous amount of her net worth, roughly a third of her total net worth, which wasn't that much in the first place, produces the following miracle. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the, flour, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So lastly, what can we learn from this story? What are the, what are the takeaways? Well, first, we aren't this widow, right? I would be very surprised if anyone here giving me a large, say, roll of bread would be consuming one-third of their net worth in so doing. I would be surprised if anyone here in giving the entire content of their kitchen to me would consume one-third of their net worth. All the more reason for us to really struggle with the message that this widow has for us today, right? Hearing, trusting, and obeying what God wants us to do with our time and talent and treasures uh, that, that he has temporarily given to us, mind you. We don't have them forever. Giving God the first portion, not just what's left over in our pockets after all the bills have been paid, Giving him, and I would say here, more than we can afford to give him, right? Because that, from a worldly perspective, is absolutely what the widow in the story today does, right? Giving her not just what we can afford, but giving God more than we can afford. No doubt, this widow from Zarephath had no idea that 2,800 years after her death, people on the other side of the planet would still be talking about it, right? But as with everything, there is a reason in all that God does. The church gives us this woman, and by the way, this woman doesn't even have a name in the story, to show us the power of trusting and obeying God with the things he has given us. Had this widow not obeyed the prophet, she no doubt would have had more food in her stomach that evening, right? But she would have been deprived of seeing the power that is in God. May we not, brothers and sisters, be deprived in our own lives of seeing the power of God through our stewardship. May God give us the courage and faith and obedience uh, to be like this widow of Zarephath. Amen. Please rise.